Hi there and welcome to the uh, second video on the Grima looking at the B section, the E minor section. So remember now we've changed key to E minor so we only have our uh, single F sharp in the key signature. Uh, and I just thought I'd go through some of the key points that uh, I've picked up along the way uh, about this uh, part and uh, just a couple of tips here and there just to help us play through. Um, so we've got uh, to start off with with a chord with um, our uh, E, B and G okay. so, and then a glissando that goes up to the C and then a pull off okay, and then back down to E. So there's quite a lot going on there so let's just break that down uh, to be really clear we know what we're doing. The first thing to do when you glissando uh, there are different ways and, and you can accent the note you're going to in different ways. You can either not play the note you're going to so the first note's much stronger that's going to be weaker. Um, th there are times and that's okay I think probably in this song um, it's more going to be we want to hear that C a lot clearer so glissando up and then when you get to the C that's when you play or repick the note again. And so there I was slightly out and what I heard myself playing it was I heard two C's and it's, the music's not written that way so what we need to do is really time it really good. Okay that's a bit better. So when you play your chord yeah, you don't have to dig in too high uh, too hard on the top note because we're going to repick that C. Okay, so we've got that. The next one, uh, we've got a pull off onto the B. Okay, and you can hear that if we don't, you know, if we play the C, then the B sounds a bit better. So let's see if we can add that in now. Okay, so this is going to test now your technique um, for getting a good slur. Okay, generally the second note is always going to be slightly lower in volume but we want to try and make it you know as good as we can really so what I'm doing I'm making sure fingertips edge of fret fingertips playing edge of fret and my little snap motion that I've probably taught in the lessons so really try to be clear that you're getting the yeah and be kind of don't be too strong on that E afterwards otherwise it will sound very loud like that and it kind of jumps up and it, it's kind of not in context with the other notes. Very quick tips there. Okay. Talked a lot about forming these uh, uh, bar rays uh, in the past and uh, how to play them. So very simple. It's a fret two. You can see we've got a B. There's a Roman numeral two above there. Uh, it's second position and you want fingers three or four. It doesn't matter really which one you want to do. I prefer finger three here because it's two frets away uh, on that D sharp and then make sure you hold the chord while you play that G and then we've just got a nice simple run down these thirds. Okay, uh, You can play those however you like whichever combinations of fingers you feel good at. Uh, let's not get too technical there but make sure the phrase ends with uh, let's just check that again now. Uh, sorry. That's where you want to feel you're ending the phrase in the next bar with the E and G and B's. It kind of just brings it back to an end. So just bearing that in mind. Although beat one is normally our stronger beat, um, it, in this instance it could be seen as an end of phrase. Now I'm sure people will interpret that differently, but that's just my take on it. So soft there. Now we start our new part. Okay, here's our new part. So we've got a, a, a E, a, a C and then A. They're the strongest notes that we want to pull out. Um, the way I kind of teach this is that we go, uh, we've got our chord ending that previous phrase. High A. Try and hold that as you play fret 7 um, on the D string for the A. I'm, I'm trying to hold them all as best as I can really because they sound quite nice when they ring together in this instance. They're not written that way but um, again it's another feature of the guitar. It sounds quite nice if they do. If you want to see what it sounds like with without that. <laughs> um, so it's your choice. Um, it, it's not the way I do it. I prefer to hold them. Uh, quick way of remembering it of course if you're not totally sure of the notes but it's good 
to now start to do it, fret 7, A, C, fret 8, F sharp, uh, fret 9, and A, fret 10. I will have done a bit of work at that this level in the lesson. So try to say the note names and, and visualise where they are. Uh, easy way, while you're just kind of getting to know it, and just another help thing to help you. Uh, so we've got uh, our 7, uh, sorry, 7, 8, 9, so just remember 7, 8, 9, 10 on the different strings and then hopefully get to the right notes. Uh, we end up there with um, bar A 7th fret. We keep coming across that at the moment in these songs. Uh, so we've got uh, low B, bar A fret 7. So, uh, D sharp, finger 2 on string 3 and F sharp is underneath the bar A on string 2. So think about these. It's the same notes, B, D sharp, F sharp here, and then find them here, B, D sharp, F sharp. If you keep finding you can't remember them, you can't do it, then take your time to learn it. You know, really go fret 7, B, fret 7, F sharp, fret 8, D sharp, and learn it. Because if you don't learn it now, then you have the same problem in the future. All right, uh, so we've ended up with that chord, and then you can see some stems down notes, a little rhythmic feature. Okay, so there's the melody note being played at the end of the phrase. So I've just used my thumb to play B, C, B, a little slur there. Okay, so only between the first B and C. Okay, so 9 to 10. Get to know the note names again. Straight away. Back to melody again. B. Uh, so what finger shall I use? I'm going to use finger 4 here because then I'm just going to move up to bar 13 where I've got my E and G's now. Similar to what we had for F sharp and A. Uh, G natural and B there of course. So remember G naturals. And now our little rundown, uh, some uh, descending slur here. I'll just do the slurs first. So get a good slur. It's no point being weak here. Okay, so with the A bass end on that F sharp, but really ends on that E. We're back there in the bottom position now. Okay, just a little tricky bit here, finger four, F sharp, fingers one and three for the A and C. Okay, and then B, the two Bs, finger one goes back to uh, D sharp, and you form basically that in real terms, you've ended up with that big B seventh chord we talk it. So, So, learning the fret names, I think I've, I've discussed this before, if, you're, if you just can't read the music and can't recognise the notes on the music, uh, trying to add the layer of complexity of trying to read and play at the same time is very, very difficult. So these are your learning songs to learn uh, the notes above the stave. Remember I've talked about A, C and E on the, on the line, ledger lines above the stave, A, C, E. B and D in between uh, on the first string and also finding these notes now A and B on frets 10 and 11, uh, uh, 10 and 12 on the second string. Um, the bar raise, getting a great sound on the bar raise, seeing where notes are replicated. Yeah, so it's just the same notes. Start to learn them in those new positions. Be good with your techniques on your slurs, yeah. fingertips, edge of frets, really crisp pull-off motions on those, uh, and the song will all come together. It's just you just repeat this, the B section, uh, and then you go back to the A section, and uh, you're finished. Uh, so have good fun with Lagrima. I hope that just explained the positions for you and just some of the techniques you need. <laughs>